So let's look now at functions and relations. And as we work our way through this lesson, our goal will be to find out whether something is a function, a one-to-one -one function, and some of the characteristics such as domain, range, etc. So let's look at some of this vocabulary or definitions to start. First of all, the domain. When we define the domain of a function, it is all the possible x values of that function or relation. And of course, the range is all the possible y values of that function or relation. And when we're talking about a relation, we're often talking about a set of ordered pairs. And if you remember ordered pairs, we write them as x followed by y. Could be numbers, could be variables. That is a relation. Now, function. If we're talking about a relation, a function is a specific kind of relation in which the domain values is only paired with one unique range value or y value. And we're going to look at this and study functions in more detail, but that's the important piece is there are only one domain value associated with the range value. So how do we test if there's a function? Remember the vertical line test. And an equation defines y as a function of x if, and this is important, if and only if every vertical line in the coordinate plane intersects the graph only one time. And we're going to look at some examples that apply this to test whether something is a function. So let's look at our first example. We're going to determine the domain and range of this function. So let's start with the domain of this function. And when we're looking for the domain, remember we're looking for the x coordinates. Now, as we're writing this, we want to write proper notation. But if we look at our graph, this graph continues on forever. If we're looking at the domain, it goes in all directions on the graph, which means every x value is allowed. All x values are allowed. And if we're writing this in proper set notation, we start with these squiggly curly brackets and we're defining the domain, so we're defining x. Now, if we put this straight line, this helps us define it when we say this line means such that, and we're gonna define our x values as an element of the real numbers. So the domain of this function is all real numbers, and you may remember that quadratic function from grade 11. Well, what about the range of the function? Now, the range is a little different. We want to go and look in the y coordinates, but we're really going to be looking at everything less than that particular y value, everything smaller than that number. So if we're defining this range, we would say y such that we're defining the range as y, it's our y coordinates, we want everything smaller or less than or equal to that y value 3, keeping in mind that y is still part of the real numbers. And there's our proper set notation for defining the domain and range of this function. And the question is, is this a function or a relation? And this is where we can come into our vertical line test. We can sometimes see we may want to draw in. Notice that all these vertical lines only touch the graph at one point on that vertical line. So indeed, this graph is a function. So let's try another example. What about a graph that looks like this? Well, now in this case, we're going to look at the x-coordinate and we can see that the graph goes to the right there, less than that value. So if we're defining the domain, the domain, again, is x values such that x now is greater than or equal to, and all we have to do is find that coordinate, negative 2. Keeping in mind that we want all the numbers in between, all the fractions and decimals, so we want all the real numbers. The range, a little bit different for the range this time. Notice now the graph goes in all directions. This graph would continue on forever if needed. So our range is our y values such that 
y is every number or an element of the real numbers. Now, if we're trying to determine whether this is a function or a relation, we come along here, we can put one vertical line and we can see where it crosses twice. This is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. So we would have a relation. Let's try another here. Domain and range of this circle. Now it's a little different now on a circle when we're defining the domain and range because now if we look at our domain, the domain goes between two particular values. There is our domain between those particular values. And if you recall writing this as a set notation, again, we're defining the domain, x such that our smallest number for x comes first, which means we have our smallest value of negative eight less than or equal to, we're gonna define our variable as x, and that is also less than or equal to negative two. So we write it as an inequality. Now again, x is an element of the real numbers because we want all the fractions in between. We use this same idea to write the range, and now the range is going to go between those values. The range for this function, y, such that our smallest value in the range is minus six, which is less than or equal to, again, y, because we're dealing with the domain, which is less than or equal to zero. And in this case, y is an element of the real numbers. So set notation, we're gonna spend some time looking at set notation as we work our way through. But what is this graph? Is it a function or is it a relation? And pretty easy to do the vertical line test through that circle fails. And as soon as that fails, we know that this is in fact a relation. Now there's one other type we're gonna look at. What if we have a graph that has a series of dots? These points on the graph. Now the thing about these points is they are not connected. We would still define the domain as X. And we would say X such that, and now we can just say the points that X is equal to. And we just look at our X coordinates and we find our way across. Our first one here is negative three. We can just put a comma. The next one is negative two. Continuing to work our way across the X axis, we work our way across. Our next one we'll find is one, followed by three and five. Because we have defined just the numbers, we don't need to say what kind of numbers they are. They're clearly just integers there. There's our values, the only possible X coordinates in the domain. Same thing applies for the range. Now we're just going to work our way up the Y axis to find the values in the range and just the same thing we did before. Y is gonna equal negative two. There's multiple points where it's zero. We only need to write it once and then two. And there is our domain and range we can still determine whether it's a function or a relation by just doing the vertical line test. And if we did the vertical line test on every single one of these points, we could see that it does in fact pass the vertical line test. And so we don't know what the equation is, but we have some type of function. So what about restrictions on the domain of the function? What values it cannot be? Well, here's one particular function that always has a restriction. If you remember the root, in this case, it is a square root. Remember, we don't write the two. Square root there. On a square root, we cannot have a negative value. So if we wanna find the restriction on this domain, underneath the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. There's our restriction. We can just move the X to the other side. Remember when we do 
move that to the other side, it's going to look like so three is greater than or equal to x, and we normally write our inequalities starting with our variable. So if we were reading this in the mirror, reading this in this direction, we'd really be saying x is less than or equal to three. So any numbers smaller than three would work in that function. What about a rational function, a fraction? And if you remember in a fraction, the restriction, what's not allowed, is the denominator. The denominator cannot equal zero. So how do we solve for this restriction? We'll just force it to be zero, make it equal to zero, solve for x, and often we can just see these restrictions. x would equal six to make it zero, which means our restriction, x cannot equal six. There's our restriction on that domain. Well, let's finish up with a few more definitions here. A one-to-one -one function, and a one-to-one -one function is defined as this, a function in which every single value in the domain is associated with one value in the range and vice versa. Only one x value associated with one y value and vice versa. We're gonna look at one-to-one -one functions in more detail, but to test for the one-to-one -one function, we have another line test. This time it's a horizontal line test, drawing a line horizontally. And if a function passes the horizontal line test, it is one-to-one. -one. And the horizontal line test, much like the vertical line test, it can only cross the graph one time horizontally. So let's put this into practice. Let's determine whether these are functions, one-to-one -one functions, or neither. And remember, function is just the vertical line test. One-to-one. -one, is a horizontal line test. And if it's neither a function or a one-to-one -one function, then it's going to be neither. So let's start with our vertical line test. The first graph, vertical line test, it is indeed a function, passes the vertical line test. Anywhere we draw a vertical line, it'll touch the graph once. Horizontal line test, we can see we have a big fail there. So this isn't a one-to-one -one function, but just a function. We can try it on the next one here, vertical line test. The vertical line test will fail. Now here's the thing about the vertical line test. That tells you it is not a function. We don't have to do the horizontal line test, because if it's not a function, we know it's not a one-to-one -one function either. A couple others here, vertical line test fails. Vertical line test, that tells you right away this picture is not a function. And what about this last picture here? Well, our vertical line test, wherever we draw a vertical line, it definitely passes, so we know it is a function. And this is where we check our other test, our new test, horizontal line test. Same thing, you draw a horizontal line anywhere, crosses the graph once, so this is more than just a function. This is a one-to-one -one function. It's just that simple, doing vertical and horizontal line tests. So we may not get a graph, we may have values that we have to determine whether it's a function, a one-to-one -one function, or neither. And recall our definitions from earlier. A function in which each domain value has one unique y value. And if it's one-to-one, -one, then every single value in the domain is only associated with one value in the range. How does it look in this picture? Well, if we're trying to determine if something is a function, Every x value only points to one y value. And if we look here, our first ones would be our domain and our range. Each of these values, two, four, six, eight, 10, they only point to one particular value. So right away we know that yes, this is a function. Well, does it pass the one-to-one -one function test? Is there only one 
value in the domain associated with one value in the range. And we can see here is our failure right here. Six points to C, eight points to C, two domain values point to one range value. So it's not a one-to-one -one function, but just a function. Let's look at the second one. Well, if we have our domain and range, right away we see a couple problems here. There's the big one right there. The number two points to two values. There's not one unique value in the range. So right away, this is not a function. And we're going to look at this and put some more details to it in class.